Hey everyone, with the football season fast approaching, I thought it would be a good idea to put something together about how I shoot amateur football as an amateur photographer. It can be quite daunting at the beginning, and so hopefully this will inspire you to get out and give it a try. Or maybe if you're already doing it, you might pick up some additional tips. So with that, let's get on with the video. Okay, one of the first things I wanted to say was I'm not going to talk a lot about settings. There are loads of great videos and tutorials out there for how to set your camera up for sports, including football. But what I do want to cover is some of the things that might be different when you're shooting amateur sports. Things like location and some of the stuff to take with you. Outside of your usual things like your lenses, batteries, cards and all that stuff you're going to need, you can take along some other things that are going to make your life a bit more comfortable. I did want to say though, I have got a post on my blog about shooting amateur sports as a whole, so I encourage you, please go and check that out and have a look at that and see if you like it. So the first bit of kit I want to show you is my stool. I use one of these tripod swivel stools. The swivel action is brilliant. It allows you to follow the game back and forth as it goes up and down the pitch, which is especially important if you're sitting on the sidelines. If you combine that with a monopod, especially with a longer lens, it's going to be a lot more stable and it means you're not going to be aching by the end of the game. The other thing as well is to make sure you've got lots of pockets. Having your teleconverters handy, spare cards, spare batteries is really important. It allows you to change on the fly and you're not going to miss too much of the action. Then for your gear and yourself you need to make sure you've got good dry kit. So it's a jacket, bag cover and you can get these universal covers that will fit over your lens and camera and so none of your gear is going to get wet. So even if you get a bit of drizzle or rain you don't have to worry about the things soaking through. The next thing I want to talk about is location. At amateur sports games there's a lot more flexibility and you can get a lot closer to the action. This really allows you to use a different range of lenses. You don't always necessarily need a really long lens, and so it's really good for people starting out. The one thing you do have to always remember though, is don't get in the way. Try to be invisible. Now I don't mean turn up in camo or a hide or anything like that, but just make sure you don't get in the way of any linesmen and you're not really distracting to the players. A lot of people won't be used to seeing someone with a camera, especially if they're sitting on a stool or have large lenses. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing your location. One way you can use that flexibility and location to your advantage is trying to pick a spot that's got a cleaner background. In parks and places like that, you've not very often got a clean background, but what you can do is move around a little bit and try and get the best you can. This is especially important if you've not got wide aperture lenses. If you're not f2 or f2.8 and you're at f4 or 5.6 or even higher, this is going to make a much bigger difference to how your images look. So try and choose somewhere with a clean background. Obviously, location of the sun and the direction your team is playing is going to impact where you sit as well. But these are all things worth thinking about. When I'm choosing a location on the pitch, always try and pick something with the team I'm there to shoot coming towards me. That way you get faces and not backs, and you're going to find you have a lot more success getting good images for that team. If you're not shooting there for one team in particular, that's less of an issue, you can choose either end. But if you are going for one team, just bear that in mind. When it comes to locations, there's really kind of three main locations that I will sit. You can go behind the goal line, either side of the goal. I usually go around sort of the edge of the box kind of markings, and what that allows you to do is get those good shots of people running down the wing, coming towards you. You get those tackles in from the side, and you can get some really nice shots that way. The other place I like to sit is actually on the sidelines to the right. Um, still in the, the offensive half for your team, but not too far up the pitch. What that means is that sometimes you can get the good shots or even the saves and you can get multiple people in the shot. Now it's really nice getting a good portraits, there's action portraits that everyone likes to see but sometimes it's also good to have a bit more context of what's going on in the game. Especially if you can time it right with a good tackle or a good save, you get that kind of wider look. The other thing as well is it allows you to get crowd shots from the other side. So if you want to get reaction shots of the crowd that's always a nice place to sit. Now I've actually had success with anything from 50 all the way up to 400. As I said, I use my 50 to 140 quite a bit from the sideline. I do sometimes use that from behind the goal if I do want to get a wider shot. The rest of the time though, I'll either use my 100 to 400. That does give me a good bit of reach across the other end of the pitch. The other thing as well is I've got my 200. This is my favourite lens by far to use for shooting football. Um, but it's not always on my camera. I do like to mix it up. At the end of the day, I'm not here as a, in any kind of professional capability. I'm there just to have fun. And same with the players, 
They don't necessarily need something that's sent into a newspaper, but they like those action portraits of themselves. When it comes to the players, one thing I do try and make sure I do is within a game, I try and at least get a few pictures of every player. As I said earlier, we're all just there to have fun. And so if you just focus on just those goals, you're going to miss out people who are maybe doing a good job back defending or doing other things on the pitch. So yeah, I try and mix it up. It's just everyone likes it that way, I think. Um, I hope so anyway. But that way you get all sorts of different shots and different people in it. The other thing as well is by kind of trying to do that and make sure you get a shot of everyone, it will push you to do some different types of shots. You're not only trying to get the goals. You're not only trying to get some sort of sideline tackle or anything like that. You can mix it up a little bit. The other thing I would say is don't delete your bloopers. Now, if you're sending things into a newspaper, no one wants to see that, that funny shot where the ball's not on the screen and you may have like someone tripping over or something like that. Now, yes, for professionals, they probably go in the bin or maybe they have a folder for them, I don't know. But when you come to sort of amateur sports, a lot of it's about just having fun. And so don't be afraid to send them in. You can always ask first, say, I've got some funny shots, do you want to see them? But then that way people get them and there's always a good bit of banter about it. So definitely worth keeping them and don't just delete them straight away. The other thing about players is that amateur games, you're a lot closer to the action, but also a lot closer to the players. That means that after the game, you can go up, have a chat, talk about the game, maybe even show them some of the pictures there on the spot. Chances are, is if you sent in bloopers, they're going to want to talk about them. They always get everyone laughing. But definitely worth going up and making that extra effort and engaging with the team a bit more. That's one of the great things about like shooting an amateur game. You can actually get a bit more involved with the team, start to know the guys. That makes the rapport much more natural. Not only does it help you taking the pictures because you feel more comfortable, but it also makes the people you're taking the pictures of more comfortable and at the end of the day, everyone's happier. So I definitely recommend that. As a massive introvert, I always find these things challenging, but that's one of the reasons why I do this. It's kind of push myself outside my comfort zone and try and do things that I wouldn't normally do. So I hope that helps. I definitely encourage you get out there, take some pictures. The only way you're going to get good pictures is if you're out there sitting on the side of the pitch. There's no pressure with amateur sports, and that's one of the good things about it. You don't have to go out there and worry about submitting pictures to magazines and competing with lots of people. We're just doing this for fun. So unless you're out there, you're not going to get any pictures. So with that, thank you, and see you on the next one.